same banks here. I thought I'd change things up a little bit and these Corona lessons, COVID-19. So I thought I would play a little bit of acoustic guitar. I love bluegrass music. I love playing acoustic guitar. I don't get to do a lot of it, but when I do get to do it, I really enjoy it. And so I thought I would do a lesson on bluegrass guitar playing, starting with just G chord rhythm, which can be then applied to any other chord, but I thought I'd just start with some real basic stuff. Bluegrass guitar picking is not that easy to do, particularly when the tempos get really high. It's, I'd say when it comes to rhythm guitar playing, it's definitely one of the more advanced styles, but it doesn't have to be that hard. It is, in its essence, relatively straightforward. It's just usually the tempos that make it quite tricky. So I'm going to give you a quick lesson on a couple of the basics of playing a G groove in bluegrass. Now, because the banjo is tuned in the key of G, that means most of what you're going to do as a guitar player is going to be out of the position of G. Sometimes C, sometimes D, but most of the time it's going to be G. The most common voicing for G that you're going to find is this one I'm holding here, so no index finger required. So the, mute, the A finger is muting that A string. We just have... We'll call it a G major chord, but technically speaking, it's just a G power chord or a G5. You've got G, D, G, D, G. It's a very strong, bare sound. Now, what you're really going to be doing most of the time with your right hand is you're going to be going bass note with a down pluck, a lighter up and down strum on the top three strings, more or less the top three strings, hitting the D, the fifth, so you're getting an alternate fifth bass line, and then down up. So you get this. Like that. And then when you have a slightly high tempo, that's got a bit of a galloping sound. That kind of thing. You can embellish that, of course. So when you get to the D string, you can do a hammer-on onto the 2nd fret. And then you can pluck the G up the octave as the next note. I don't do all this, that all the time just because it's better as an effect, not a habit. Most of the time it's just usually... The faster the tempo gets, the less work I try and do. So same on banjo. I play lighter and I play less because the gaps between the notes are so, so small. So if I'm playing at a really high tempo, I almost tend to just play on beats two and four like a mandolin. So if you had something, it was like one, two, one, two, three, four. But that's not as common to get that kind of stuff happening. It, it is much harder to play really fast on an acoustic guitar than it is on any other bluegrass instrument. As a banjo player, the banjo is engineered for speed. It's Once you've got your technique down, it's not that hard to play at moderately high tempos. And a moderately high tempo for the banjo is insanely fast for any other instrument. So what you can also do here is you can do a hammer-on to the bass note. is meant to imitate the bagpipes. Originally, traditional American folk music is just Scots-Irish folk music. It was bagpipe music that the English banned the bagpipes in 1747 after the Battle of Culloden. And because the English weren't as familiar with Scottish pipe music, only the instrument, the Scots decided to put that music on the fiddle. And when you hear a fiddle tune and you hear them starting up the tune by going... <laughs> That is the fiddle trying to replicate the sound of what they call striking the bag on the bagpipe. So you know when you hear a pipe and they go, then it goes into the tune. That's what we're doing. And on the guitar, we do that through these lower grace notes. Out of this, you can play the famous G lick or the Lester flat. So that's going to go 3rd fret of the low E string, 
open A, first fret A, second fret A, open D, second fret D, open D, G. There are variations, you can shorten it, or if it's really fast you just go. Less is more at those high tempos. So hopefully this G lick study and chord thing you'll find useful. You can apply it to anything else, but in a bluegrass setting, rhythmically, everything around you, you are the engine room as a guitar player. So everything around you relies on the stability and forward motion. You've got to be almost like a locomotive engine, just pushing through. You sit right at the front end of the beat. If you think of, if you zoom in on a beat and then you zoom in so a beat becomes like about that big, rather than sitting at the back end, like some sort of laid back neo soul groove, where you want to be right at the front end, leaning, so it almost feels like we're rushing, but you're not rushing. It's your job to just you know, like really whip the band, make sure they don't slow down at all. Banjo player, he probably will be fine, but when it comes to everybody else, it's your job to keep them going. So look, have fun with this stuff. I'm gonna do some more things looking at C chords, D chords, couple of licks, and just the fundamental basics of bluegrass that anyone can do at home. And it's a great style of guitar playing. We will get into looking a little bit of flat picking though. But enjoy this stuff, I love it. So check out these players, Brian Sutton, Tony Rice, Cody Kilby, and Jake Workman. They're really, when it comes to flat picking, some of the finest players that are out there and definitely worth a listen to. So I'll catch up with you guys soon and enjoy it. Take it easy.